In my Zettelkasten for Programmers video, I showed you my note-taking system and the goals and motivations behind it. In this video, I'll show you how it works. If you didn't catch my last video, I'll share a link at the end of this one and in the video description. But here's a simple example of how my note-taking system works. First, I'll open a recent project of mine in Tmux. When I was working on this the other day, I implemented a feature using Pydantic. I have this YouTube args with a privacy status that goes through a validator. I want to save this as a code snippet to my second brain notes. I'm going to pop open a new pane and then I'm going to type on space the name of my note. Pydantic validation. Then I'm going to press space on and that's going to create my default note template. I can come down into the body of the note and paste my code. I'm also gonna pop back over here and go to the part where I import it, paste this in. Here's an example. I'm gonna go to the internet where I got my Pydantic example from. So I'll put that URL in here. I wanna tag this as a code snippet and I'll see some auto completion for code snip tag. And in my hubs, I wanna link this to a Python theme note. Lastly, my title, I have a shortcut set up where I can type space OF and I can format that. Now I'll save this, I'll write out of here and I'll just leave this pane and I can get back to work. Now say I'm working on another one of my projects. I'll open up this one and I wanna reference this information. What I can do is go to a blank pane and I'm gonna to navigate to my vault using OO. Then I'm gonna go into Vim and I'm gonna type space FS to start searching. And here I'm gonna type Pydantic to try and find this note. And here it is, I can see the content. I can even open it up. And if I wanted to, I could say directly copy this, go up to the top of my note here or my code here and paste it in. Do the same thing with my body. And here I'm using leader Y to copy the text so that I can put it into a different pane in Tmux. I can come down wherever I want it and paste it using my clipboard in my system. This is my workflow with note taking. So in this video, I wanna show you how all of this works. Here's another example of how I can use my system. Every so often I clone a repo onto a remote machine and I wanna set up git deploy keys so that I can push and pull code from the remote machine. I've got a guide for that and I usually have to go into gist on the internet and pull up this guide in order to reference it and copy and paste commands into my terminal. Here I'm logged into a remote machine, but I can just go ahead and open up a new pane, which will open up on my computer. And then I can type vim and then space os, and this will start searching within my second brain vault. I can type deploy key and here's the file that I want. I'll open that up. And then I can even copy and paste code directly over. So if I wanted to highlight this line, for example, and I'll say leader Y to copy that, go over to the left, quit out of this, and I can paste that and have that right in my command line here. I've also got other shortcuts set up for fuzzy finding files in my second brain. So for example, here, I'm just in the root directory of my computer. If I go ahead and open Vim and type space OZ, here I can start doing fuzzy finding in my vault. So I could search Git and find some stuff on Git inside of the text. Or if I look up that deploy key example, here I'm actually searching for the title in my text. Or here I'm finding a totally different command for gcloud deploying something. The idea is to have this information in a super modular way so that I can just easily open up new panes, go into Vim and type for what I want and sort of Python or bash or whatever I need and resource that information quickly and efficiently for myself. I'm Alex, and here on Zazen Codes, I teach full stack data science. Having a knowledge capture system will give you a solid foundation to grow your skills, and this video will help with that. It'll also help with your skills using Linux, terminals, and bash scripts. I've actually made my second brain available to you as a Notion repository, using a script that syncs the Obsidian vault we're looking at in this video with a Notion database. If you're interested in seeing that, you can find a link on my Patreon page. And if you sign up there as a supporter, then you'll get video walkthroughs of my book and course notes. Let me show you how this all works. Here's a diagram of my system. The core of everything is my Obsidian file system, which is just a set of markdown files and folders. And how most people use and manage those is through the Obsidian app or the Obsidian UX. This is also synced to other devices using iCloud. Since I wanna use this from the terminal, I have a NeoVim Obsidian plugin, which interfaces with NeoVim. And I use this from within Tmux. 
Inside of NeoVim, I use Telescope for fuzzy finding and file searching. And then I have shell scripts and configurations set up to help me make this more efficient and automate certain tasks. Tmux is important to me because that lets me open up new panes inside of the same terminal window. So the way I would do that is say Tmux new session and I can say new session. From inside of Tmux, you can use the default commands to open up new panes and bounce between these. I don't have anything special going on in my Tmux config, except for that I've set my leader key to A, which you can see from my key bindings at the bottom, for example, A, and then I can switch A, and then I can close. Next, I have a shortcut, which I've alias to OO, that will let me go into my vault. And I can show you what the path looks like. It's in my library mobile documents iCloud folder, and this is how the iCloud sync works on Mac OS. I could also go ahead and open that, and here you can see all of my markdown files associated with my second brain notes. In fact, the notes I just took are in my inbox. Here's the one on Pydantic validation that we just showed. I can also show you this in the Obsidian app. So again, here's my inbox. This is that Pydantic note I was showing you. And I keep all of my notes in this note folder under the right heading, the tag that I gave my note as it goes into my inbox. So here I have one on a fact, and that would go in the facts folder. The Pydantic one I put as a code snip, so that would go in the code snips folder here. I set up this alias in my RC file, which for me is ZSHRC. Expand this for you. So I have this alias OO, and that just changes directory. And I have two other commands, which I'll discuss soon. Next, I'll talk about how I've configured Vim. So inside of my notes directory, I can open up Vim and I can do fuzzy searching for files like I was showing you. So if I type git, I get a bunch of notes related to git. I can also do fuzzy searching within the files. So if I type git here, now it's going to be searching inside of files for places where I said git. In addition to this, I can just open up a tree and I can navigate these files like a regular file system. Inside of Vim, I can do things like link between notes. So if I wanted to link this to a different note that I had on Git, I could do that this way. And then from in here, I could say space GF to follow that, and I can open up my tree to see where that new file lives. Using Vim commands, I can also go between those two buffers like this. So I'll show you how that all works. If I go to my Vim config, I have this set up with Lua, and I use Lazy as my plugin manager. And inside of here, I have an Obsidian plugin, which is right here. I have a configuration just for that plugin where I define my workspace. I define where I want my new notes to go. And then I have my key mappings. Here I have GF, which I showed you where I can follow links through to other notes. The next component of my Vim configuration is Telescope. Here's where that's installed in my lazy configuration. And I've also got a file where I configure some options for Telescope, such as how I want it to preview my files. And lastly, I have some key maps set up for Telescope right here. I can do FS to find files or FZ to do fuzzy searching. So what I just showed you will get you pretty far. You can press OO to go to your second brain. Inside of there, you can open Vim. And inside of here, you can start doing fuzzy searching. Inside of your note, the Obsidian plugin will help you do linking between notes. And it'll also help you with your tags. So I use fact as a tag. I also have a tag for book, for my book notes, or for videos, for video notes. And it also handles the front matter. So if I were to look at this file in Obsidian, I would see that the front matter is nicely formatted like this. And I have all the appropriate features of having this as a tag. I'll take a quick moment to explain my hubs. If I zoom in on this and open up my file tree, I can open up my hubs folder. And here I have a bunch of different files which correspond to different topics. And all of these files are just blank, but they form logical hubs where I can categorize notes in, in here. And the way that works is I can add a new hub and then searching for say JavaScript and that's gonna be the hub for JavaScript. We've talked about everything in blue as well as the NeoVim plugin for Obsidian and Telescope. And I've also been showing you what my Obsidian UX looks like and how my iCloud integration works with mobile iCloud. That way I can use this on my mobile device as well. Now I'll talk about some automations that I've set up using shell scripts and NeoVim and shell configurations. The first workflow I'll talk about is my new note. So when I type on new note, and once I've done this, I can see in my left pane, it's created a new file called new note, and it's put that into my inbox. Inside of my new note, the next thing I'll do is press space on, 
and this will create my new note template. And the final automation with new notes is to reformat my title here by pressing space O F. So I'll show you how all of that works right now. I'll get a new pane going here and I'll maximize it. I've got a folder which I just call bin and I put it in my user directory. And if I go inside of here, I have a script called on. And this is actually symlinked to a dot files repository that I put on GitHub. And I'll put a link to it in the video description. And here's how this bash script works. I type on and my computer knows where that command lives because I have this in my path. It looks for an argument and if it doesn't receive that, it gives me an error. But if it does receive that, it creates a file name based on the argument. Then it goes into my second brain repository and I create a new file in my inbox and then I open that using nvim. The next two commands happen inside of vim. So to do that, I'll have to open up my vim configuration. Remember that was in dot config slash nvim. And inside of here, I can go into Lua and I have it in a file called workflows. So in here, once I'm in vim, I type leader on, which is a spacebar for me. And this calls the obsidian template note command, which formats the current buffer into a note. And the final thing I've been showing you is just a simple command called OF, which reformats the text under the current line by stripping out the date. So I'll just show you this in action one more time. If I do which ON, it's referring to that ON file, which I have open right here in my bin. If I type ON, it gives me that error. And you can see that error here. But if I type ON and then some good file name, now what it's done is it's created a new file and I can open that up and see that it's in my inbox in my second brain. And in fact, that file is already available in Obsidian. And here it is here. Now if I go back to my terminal and I type space ON, that triggers the function that I have set up in my workflows for NeoVim, and that creates a new note from a template. In fact, you can see where I have my templates right here, and this just uses the note template. And if I split that open, what you can see is it's dynamically inserting the current date and the current title. And this title just corresponds to the title of the file. That's why I have another command set up, leader OF, to format that title. And you can see how fast it syncs. Now I've set up a few more convenience commands for using my notes. Here I have a command OS and OZ, and these use telescope inside of Vim to search within a certain directory. So I don't actually need to be in my notes directory to do that search. But honestly, I find I don't use this all that often. So if I'm in my home user directory and I just open Vim from here and type OS, then I can search for file names directly in my vault. This just kind of saves me from typing OO in order to actually get to my vault before I open Vim. And honestly, it's not a big draw, so I don't think that's worth it. And I'll, I'll probably just get rid of that. What I do love is my Zettelkasten workflow for reviewing files. And I can do this at the end of the day or at the end of the week as they accumulate in my inbox. I've created an automation that lets me review these files. Here's how it works. The first part is an alias that I have set up in my ZSHRC. And that alias is right here. And it's called OR for Obsidian Review. And next in my workflows area here, I have two commands set up. I have OK and ODD. What OK does is it puts that note into a folder called Zettelkasten. And what ODD does is it deletes that file. So I'll show you an example of my review process for all of the files that I currently have in my inbox. I'll type OR and that'll start my review process by opening up all of my inbox files in NeoVim. And these are all available as buffers in my current session. On my first file, I wanna keep this. So I'll type space, okay. And now the file is closed. And if I type, open up my tree here and go down to my Zettelkasten folder, I can see that that file has been moved into that folder. Here's another file that I wanna keep. So I'll say, okay. And now that's moved to my Zettelkasten folder. So let's go through the rest of these files. That one I wanna move over. This one I wanna keep. This one I wanna keep, keep. This one I definitely wanna get rid of. So I'll say ODD and that just goes into my bin. This one's empty. This one I'll get rid of. And this one I'll get rid of as well. And now we're done. So if I open up my tree again and go to my inbox, see that that's empty and my Zettelkasten folder has all my files in it. So the next part of my system is to organize these things. 
And for this, I made a bash script called OG. And what this does is it opens up each file, it iterates over these, and it looks at the front matter of these files and it finds the tag. And once it gets the tag, it puts the file into that folder. So what I mean is I have all these notes folders and all of these folder names correspond to the tag of each note. And I think it's going to be valuable to organize files this way. For example, my book notes are pretty comprehensive and I take a lot of time when I create these. Same with my cheat sheets and I add to these over time. But then notes like facts are more just like quick notes that I jot down. So I don't like the idea of these all getting piled into the same directory, which would be like the classic Zettelkast and approach. And I think there's benefit into organizing things this way. What I can do is I can just type OG and it's gonna do all of that organization for me. So now when I look at my file explorer again, get out of hubs and my Zettelkast and folders empty. And all of those files have now been put into my notes. For example, we had that Pydantic code snippet down here. Now I've got one last part of this system and that synchronizes this Obsidian Vault with a Notion repository. I put a little bit of time into doing that because I wanted to make my notes available to you in a convenient way. And the way that works is that I have a command called OU and that will just go ahead and upload every new note over the last five days. And I use a script that I wrote called batch upload. That script uses the Notion API and it's open source. And I'm gonna make a video about how that works so that you can use it for your own projects. For now, let's just run it. I'm gonna go back up into this window where I've been working, quit out of Vim, and I'll just type OU. And now that's gonna upload all of these notes that I've just been taking and organizing into Notion. While that's running, I'll pull up Notion and show you. So here's my second brain repository. And I'm gonna go into my code snippets. Now my script's done running. I can see right here, Pydantic validation. And if I open that up, I can see the code snippet that I created earlier in this video, which is now in Notion. So if you wanna explore my second brain, you can find a free link on my Patreon page. For example, I was watching a video yesterday on building an ML system for Southeast Asia's largest hospital. And this video only had like 500 views, but it was fantastic. And it talks about real world use case of machine learning and some really valuable act actionable insights, such as the value of domain expertise and that more data does not necessarily improve models. In fact, in this case, they set up a different model for each hospital and serve those with different API endpoints. Of course, you can find a link to that video in this note here. The other resource I'll bring your attention to is my .files repository on GitHub. This repository has a lot of the code configuration that we were just showing, such as my bin files for this new note creation, my NeoVim configuration. Here's that workflows file that I was talking about with this OK command, OS, OF, ON, and so on. Thank you for watching. If you found this video valuable, I'd appreciate it if you gave me a like and consider subscribing. As a new channel, this really helps me get my content discovered. And I'm curious, what was your favorite thing that I showed you? What's the one thing that you're gonna implement right away in your note-taking system? By the way, if you're having trouble implementing some of this stuff, let me know in the comments below and I can help you out or someone from the community can give their input. If you're struggling with it, then I bet others are as well. Now, as promised, I'm gonna leave a link to the video on my open source code for syncing Obsidian with Notion. And you can follow this link to see how that all works. Otherwise, it was great spending some time with you today and I'll see you in the next one. Namaste.